Beautiful day out to work on the Meep Mopar Jeep. We've got a Redneck Ram package. We're gonna do a little unboxing and uh, get a nice quick little install and also clean up the steering that's already on the stock Super Duty axle. So, should be fun. Let's do it. Okay, so some preface here on this Dodge Ram 1500. This was a farm truck rebuilt transmission, billet internals, rebuilt transfer case. It had 213,000 miles when I bought it maybe, and it doesn't have much more now, but either way, everything on it was pretty junk. Also, the front end was crashed. So, uh, you know, <laughs> who knows, uh, you know, the standards that were gone into uh, taking care of this. So, anywho, farm truck, high mileage, steering box did not look like this. It was all greasy and slimy, so they obviously cleaned it. It gave a nice fresh paint job. Caps in the original ones, two lines right here. It's centered, so this is all super nice. Big sticker on the front of it. This looks really sweet. Here's how the Ram looks, super nice. Two sets of tabs for your time joint, bolts, nuts, and then some 90s for the hoses if you need them. So really good kit, really quick. It took about a week and a half, and that included shipping, so insanely fast for a rebuild and kit to get here, so I'm stoked. Anyways, we're gonna do the first step on this list, and that's gonna be installing the steering box and checking for clearances, so. Okay, so I manhandled that steering box up there. I also went ahead and uh, replumbed the lines to the uh, power steering pump on it. Might as well. Next step from our good old instructions is going to be mount the ram on the axle, tack weld it into place on the axle, and then do some measuring knuckle to knuckle, full, full crank each side, measure, snap the next tab right in the middle of that, and then you weld everything in. So. Let's just say these links were mounted right here off a box that kind of meets it halfway in order to keep everything parallel. We have eight inches of travel leading right to this inner edge of the diff cover. So it looks like I'm not gonna have to mount to that old leaf spring hanger. I can actually just fit it right here. So I'm gonna build a box that comes out of that. All right, so the distance between the tie rod and the axle tube is five and a half inches. And if I want the mount to sit not quite right on top of the tie rod but a little further back i'm going to go ahead and make a mount that comes three inches off the axle tube the ram gussets themselves are two inches so that'll give me a five inch differential from the axle tube and allow a half inch for that ram to sit backwards half an inch you know that's just in case uh the tie rod takes a beating and uh, i don't want to hurt the ram but i will preface this i am going to go high steer on this axle eventually and then also dom links for both the drag link and the tie rod so this is a temporary for now until I go high steer. So um, it's not gonna be here permanently. So I don't really care if it's not in the most ideal solution. So this is some quarter inch, four inch angle iron. I use this steel to fix my neighbor's bat wing in that one short video I released. So um, this is just leftover scrap. Gonna go ahead and start plasma cutting these out and uh, axle tubes gonna mount right here and then the top and bottom and then i'll use it even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answer to no man i still go 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 hustle out hustle every single day i'll be making Till I'm buried in my grave uh, To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway Is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb I invite pain 
you never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief uh, They'll see with the negativity But I just slide right by that energy uh, Even when you feel low you Box being super hot, that's how it looks on top of the axle Obviously it's gonna be rotated 90 degrees I will zap that to the axle, tack it in place for now And then uh Tack the ram in place and we'll start doing some measurements. Okay, so we ended up swapping the um, recentered Humvee bead locks for the regular bead locks because we needed the back spacing. That way we could get max turn on both sides. On the normal Humvee tires, you were hitting the leaf springs on the uh, inner side on full crank. So. That's why those are there. I'm gonna swap the back two eventually. As you can see, plenty of clearance here. In any case, the next step from our nice little step book is to go full crank both sides, mark down exactly where the mount is, full crank. So full crank to the driver, mounts right there. Full crank to the passenger is this line. So that's about a little over a quarter inch gap with that being said, that's perfectly in spec to what they expect. So now all you do is weld in the mount exactly halfway between those two lines. All right, so we've got everything in place. Let me try and get a wide enough angle. If we go full crank this way, we've got plenty of clearance. All right, if we come full crank driver, you can see we're still hitting the diff cover. So I'm gonna need this mount to come further out on the tie rod. So I'm gonna move that mount and then retest. Okay, so we're full crank passenger and we clear everything. Let's go full crank driver and we're good. I made that gap kind of as small as I needed to. That way the ram stays perfectly parallel to the tie rod. So I'm gonna call that good. I think that'll work perfectly fine for our application. Last step for fitment here is gonna be drag link. So my drag link does not fit with the ram where it's placed and that is totally my fault that's a little handmade drag link kind of just designed to move around the uh yard while i was moving out of the army so that's no longer going to take place i'm going to build a whole new one and fix that and i got a little bit of a crazy design i'm going to do on this since i'm not going high steer quite yet i'm going to build a jut off the uh, tie rod end on this side do a little drag link only high steer. It should be pretty funky, but with the hydraulic assist, I shouldn't run into any steering issues. I shouldn't run into any steering issues. So we'll see. All right, so you see where I chopped my rear bumper on the uh, 88 Crawler Samurai? Those ends are what I'm gonna use to make my extended high steer for the drag link. Also, I re-welded the uh, <laughs> ram mounts with uh, a couple stacks that thing's not going anywhere in any case next time you see it i promise you will be the final shot all right so we're in a freshly mowed field you know what that means As is tradition, it's hot as shit out. So you got me finished in this video in my uh, bathing suit. So deal with it. It's called uh, owning property. Do whatever you want, right? In any case, here is the Meep. She's looking pretty. I went ahead and painted everything else black. I feel like the red was just too much. White cage, black everything else. Hand painted wheels looking uh, fresh. But here's how the Meep's looking. It's uh, coming along quite nicely, if I do say so myself. Now let's take a look at this video's project, the Redneck Ram Hydro Assist Kit. So, I did redneck this one up quite a bit. This is uh, not the proper way 
to go high steer or probably the proper way to use that tie rod but we're gonna rock it till it breaks it turns full crank both ways has hydraulic pressure can spin it with your finger so again this is a original 2001 f350 super duty tie rod came with these axles redneck ram welded like quad pass into the tie rod coming around we got a mount on the axle that's box quarter and then on the tie rod as well we've got a little elevation popping up and then we have heim joint steering for drag link going right to the pitman arm so everything works fine one thing i am going to do is zip tie these hoses up out of the way probably up to the frame somewhere that way uh drag link never hits them other than that it's uh looking pretty again i really dig that white and black i think it pops super well and I think it gives it a really sinister look. So the Meep. And truthfully, you can't even tell it's a Ram 1500 anymore. People are just gonna think it's a Jeep. There's not a lot of Ram 1500 left. So very cool, very fun. This video was fun to make. Redneck Ram, great company, super easy to work with. It takes like a week and a half to get the kit in the mail after you ship them your box. So really amazing company, can't say that enough. In any case, next video, we're doing bead locks on the 88 Samurai. I've done a few of these, and just like the other ones that I've already done, we're gonna be doing them on six lug Toyota axles with some stickies and some 15 inch steelies. So, should be fun. 88 Sammy video coming up next. It is quite a hot and humid day. That's all I'm gonna say. I will uh, see you guys next time. Hopefully the weather is a little more tolerable. Legacy Farms out.